All right, all right, all right. Time for a little quick fire SmackDown review. So, the SmackDown after WrestleMania. Normally, these shows can be a little bit more exciting. Apparently, WWE forgot the memo, though, because they opened up with Braun Strowman versus Shinsuke Nakamura, and I literally fell asleep. So, here comes Captain Two Minutes in Braun Strowman, your new Universal Champion. By the way, that Universal title, fucking joke. That belt has been booked into oblivion. Somebody please explain to me how I'm supposed to give a shit about a belt that is defended on average every 56 seconds in a match. It, fucking hell. I've lost count of how many times I've watched it uh, be defended in these stupid L1 spamming finisher bullshit matches. Oh, Claymore, 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 you know, that kind of thing. But very much like uh, Drew McIntyre winning the WWE title. These kind of matches don't fucking help the belt. And they don't help the prestige of your title. And the WWE title is kind of set in stone, so it, it can take some hits. But the Universal title is fairly fresh. It hasn't been around too long. It hasn't got much prestige. It hasn't been on a plethora of great guys. Like, Kevin Owens was a fairly decent champion. And then he lost to Goldberg in 52 seconds. Big fuck you. Uh, Goldberg lost it to Brock Lesnar in about four and a half minutes. Brock, Les Brock Lesnar lost it to... I don't know, Seth Rollins in about five or six minutes with a low blow. and yeah, I honestly am so sick of this belt. And the fact they put it around the waist of this obnoxious, bearded, redneck buffoon who has not been even remotely... Re I mean, this guy a month ago was in a mid-card IC title match with Cesaro, Sami Zayn and Shinsuke Nakamura. Three-on-one handicap. And he lost. He lost to three people who have been perennial scrubs for the last two years. Now, obviously, all three of those guys are extremely talented wrestlers. Nobody's arguing that. But WWE has made them look like dog shit. So why am I now supposed to believe that Shinsuke Nakamura can come strolling out face up to Braun Strowman get these hands? He's so boring. But you know the Vince McMahon sitting there going, oh, he's such good shit. Look at him. He's got a, he's got a beard and rides and wow. Right, fuck off. Like, this is your marquee champion. Okay? This is a brand that has The Fiend. This is a brand that has Daniel Bryan. You know, uh, fuck it. This is your best bet. You talk about a big... F oh, God, please. Like, uh, far be it from me to throw this at it, but please, Roman Reigns, save us. I would take Roman Reigns as champion over this scrub any day. Because you know what? Roman cares. He works hard. He has good matches. Braun Strowman does none of those things. Braun Strowman sucks. And then, to cap it all off, he's on here slagging off independent artists in a time like the Corona. Yeah, because people can easily just go and get another job when there's a pandemic on, can't they? You big fucking berserker idiot. What an absolute ovine lummox this geezer is. Honestly, just a big old slab of retardation, frankly. And I'm bored of it. I'm so bored of seeing him. And then... Oh, Christ. So, I like Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross. I do. But them beating the Kabuki Warriors twice in a row really ticks me off. So the Kabuki Warriors, right, we've established, and I don't think anyone with a brain is going to argue that Asuka and Kairi Sane are two of the best wrestlers that WWE has, particularly in the women's division. But overall, in general, they are fantastic. They're entertaining. They're powerful. They're strong style. They're everything you could ask for in a WWE sports entertainment-centric superstar. They are the tag. Now, they're not going to be able to hold the tag titles forever. That's fine. And a little Palmy doesn't really mind that much that Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross won it. But the fact that they won it clean twice against a tag team of this quality, with this kind of power, it just looks hokey. And their matches, I, I hate to break it to people, their matches are not good. They're a bit boring. Not the Kabuki Warriors, Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross. They're just, they're just not that fun. They're really not. Like, they're painfully choreographed, and I hate to be super negative, because they're not bad workers. Nikki Cross is a particularly good worker at times, but fucking hell. Like, yeah. this is this is what happens, right? Okay, great. So you had these Women's Tag Team Championships. That's fine. I have no problem with bringing those belts in. Those belts belong in WWE, providing that you build a tag team division first. No, couldn't do that. Couldn't let it breathe. Couldn't wait. Couldn't build up the division. Now, fuck it. Just lob, just lob them in there. That's more money. I'll shut up all the liberals who want more women's belts. Of course we want more women's belts. We just want to make sure that they're fucking validated before they turn up. 
Just like the Universal title. Who cares about the women's tag titles? I did when they were around the waist of the Kabuki Warriors because they legitimised them. I like the Iconics. I thought they were very entertaining, very funny. But ultimately, from a wrestling standpoint and from a working standpoint, they were garbage in comparison to the Kabuki Warriors. Even Sasha Banks and Bailey had quite the uh, upside to them in comparison to the Iconics as workers. But the Kabuki Warriors are the first legitimate tag team where you felt like, you know, they beat Becky Lynch and Charlotte to retain those belts. But they can't beat Nikki Cross and Alexa Bliss. <sighs> nah, not feeling it. Nothing nothing against Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross, but this doesn't work for me. I'll tell you what else doesn't work for me. Hearing Elias saying, this guy's boring too. What the, what the fuck is this? Like, <laughs> his gimmick, okay has become so stale and so boring, and as a face, he's even worse. Oh, he's so unbearably boring and obnoxious. So, a few of you motherfuckers were giving me stick for my singing guitar work on uh, the AJ Styles tribute video. Um, You know, turns out that I don't particularly want to get hit with copyright spam, you fucking idiots, but hey, it is what it is. But thank you to the people who were positive about it. I work very hard on content for you guys, and I hope you enjoyed it. Um, (laughs) Elias is no better than me. On the guitar and singing wise, he's not good. He's boring. He's stupid. His gimmick is. Do you know Vince McMahon is saying, oh, "Guitars are funny." Like Elias looks great. Got a great body. He's put together. He looks like a cross between Damian Sandow and Randy Savage. And I'm sure if he worked enough guys who could wrestle very well, he would be fantastic. But uh, I don't care. He's hokey. He's stupid. He's all the reasons. That people don't watch wrestling en masse anymore. Because there's absolutely potential there. But Vince McMahon is so obsessed with... Put a headband on and play some guitar. And sing about your opponents. Because when he gets in the ring, he's boring as fuck. And you know why he's boring as fuck? Because he never gets a fucking chance to wrestle anyone who's worthwhile. When was the last time Elias had a relatively good match? I'll wait. We'll be waiting a while. Because it's been a fucking while. But good news, everybody, because Dolph Ziggler's out here to job out our favourite wingman, Tucky, Tucky. So, no Otis and no Mandy Rose. Um, By the way, what state are those photos? Why is he holding a bunch of bananas? (laughs) But it's funny and it's entertaining, which is more than I can say for Dolph Ziggler, who's so fucking boring at this point. Can someone explain to me how the revival get released? But this motherfucker, yeah, we're, we're quite happy watching scrubs like Elias and fucking Dolph Ziggler and, you know, a plethora of other talents. Let's be honest, there's a lot of guys running around doing fuck alls, that rider, Kurt Hawkins, you know, nothing against those guys. A lot of them can work, but the Revival were legitimately one of the best tag teams in the world. And they let them just, you know, ah, fuck it, let them go. We, we can't bother to use them. Yeah, they gotta put Icy Hot down their pants. That's funny. That's money. That is. <laughs> fuck off, Vince. Honestly, you're getting on my fucking nerves. This this match right here was fine, right? Dolph Ziggler has always been a fantastic worker, but he's just so boring. What's he. His gimmick is essentially that he's a whingy bloated shitbag and he's not very good at that he's fucking tedious and he'll probably go on twitter and start having a little win few people don't rank me shut the fuck up it's fucking boring and then he jobs out tucker like okay well jobs out might be a bit strong like you know it was a reasonably competitive match and then of course you know sonia deville in association with Dolph Ziggler this is a legitimate badass a great female fighter she could be having absolute stormers with people like Shayna Baszler and Becky Lynch and Asuka yeah but um Mandy Rose and Otis that's money now I love the Mandy Rose Otis thing but I've got bad news for everybody the only way is down now like what else can you do with it Otis has got his girl now eventually they're gonna have to drag away from that because Vince McMahon is probably offended by the sheer idea of someone who looks like Otis being with someone like Mandy Rose. Right? She should be with a real man like me, cause I've got grapefruits. It- 
Good God almighty. I dread to think where this is going to go. I have a sneaking suspicion that Tucker's going to end up turning and sleep through a mad or something along those lines. No idea. Once they get bored of heavy machinery and Vince probably thinks that, oh, yeah, that's Otis is making money. Tucker shit. Let's have Tucker sleep with her. You just know that something bad is going to happen. You just know they're going to do something to ruin it because it's WWE, man. They ruin things. I've got to say, Raw, right? Very entertaining. For what it is. It was a bit boring this week. But Raw overall has actually been really excellent. Like Smackdown on the other hand. Has been the drizzling shits. Oh. It's, it's just fucking. Like you got Braun Strowman as your champion. You know. You, the tag team champions. Thank God. Are really good. And really entertaining. And no surprise. But that's another thing as well. Look at their tag team division. Look how good it is on Smackdown. You know. You've got Heavy Machinery. You've got Miz and Morrison. You've got the Usos. You've got the New Day. It's stacked over there. Raw. Not so much. Other than the Street Profits, really, who, to be fair, are excellent. <laughs> but, nah, fuck them. Fucking get, get rid of Revival. They're just taking up room. We need more people like Kurt Hawkins. <laughs> They're money. <laughs> just pointless. And Dolph Ziggler beating Tucker doesn't accomplish anything. Whoopee. We're probably going to get a rematch. Otis versus... I can see what's going to happen. It's going to be Mandy and Otis versus Dolph Ziggler and Sonya Deville because now that they've had this wonderful moment, they're going to try and bleed it for all it's worth and ruin the fun, organic nature of everything that's going on. And the biggest mistake they can make is take Tucker away from Otis. You watch how quickly Otis will struggle without Tucker. Not because Otis is a bad worker or not entertaining by himself, because he's wonderful, but they come hand in hand. They're wonderful stuff. You know, they're such a great combination. You know, it's like Arn and Tully. You wouldn't take one away from the other because they were absolute gold together. Tucker is the ultimate wingman, and he feels believable as that best friend. And if you take that dynamic away, I don't give a shit, and I guarantee people will start to turn off from it. Because wrestling fans, we're all a bit fickle, and once we've got what we want, we then want more. And if we're just given what we've already been given, we get bored. That's just the way it is. This is a constantly revolving, constantly moving storyline, and WWE just isn't keeping up with demand, and I can just see them doing it. And man, this SmackDown was pretty much evidence of the fact they don't really know what they're doing and people want to make an excuse and say oh yeah well this, you know there's a pandemic on absolutely i understand that i fully do but come on they've been doing this for months well before any pandemic broke out they have such a wishy-washy attitude towards booking and the way they present their tv and this smackdown was evident of that now the dirt sheet was funny it was great fun, except for the song. The song was crap. I'm sorry, but it was. I know people are going to say, mm, you don't like fun stuff. I do like fun. I love the Firefly Funhouse. I love the Boneyard match. They were really cooking. Absolutely cooking. If they just got up and gone, hey, hey, ho, ho, me and Morrison, I would have been cool. But instead, there was this fucking horrible rap, which I'm so grateful for the Usos for interrupting. Um, this segment proved why tag team wrestling is so wickedly and wildly underrated because surprise these guys came out and absolutely burned the microphone up and entertained the shit out of us is it a surprise not really they've been doing this fucking shit for the better part of the last five years but no you want more Braun Strowman god damn it next week the other half of the tag teams will go at it in a triple threat for the tag team championships I'm assuming a normal match and not a ladder match uh, Again, I'm going to have to play Buzz Kill here. Not a fan. Not a fan. That means that you've had back-to-back -back SmackDown Tag Team Championship matches without a tag team. Th no. You're watering down the premise of things. Now, I didn't mind the WrestleMania match because that was a matter of circumstance. It, it kind of just had to happen because The Miz wasn't available for whatever reason. Medical cleared or not. No idea what's going on there. I don't really buy into dirt sheets, uh, except for this dirt sheet, obviously, because it was money. But... Yeah, no, it'll be a great match, no question. I'll enjoy that match as well, and that gives me a reason to tune in to SmackDown, because frankly, the rest of the show did not give me much of a reason to tune in, let's be honest. But, yeah, I, I'm i a bit of a traditionalist. I'm never a fan of singles guys as tag team champions. I excuse the Miz and Morrison, because I've had such a rich past, and they kind of built a legacy. Same with the bar, you know? Yeah, okay, at the start, you thought, oh, fuck off, they're not a proper tag team. But at least they worked at it and earned it. You know, I'm just not a fan of these people where they win it and then they piss off after a couple of weeks. And on top of that tradition, I'm also a fan of the tag team championships being defended by a tag team. Just kind of seems like that's not too much to ask in this day and age, but Fetzberg Man's got a hold of the bucket. 
<laughs> you can really tell that Paul Heyman has a hand in a creative on Raw because it just seems a little bit edgier and a little bit more exciting, more wrestling as well, better quality wrestling with better quality wrestlers, which is surprising when you consider that SmackDown has guys like Drew Gulak and Daniel Bryan and Shinsuke and AJ Styles and what the fuck are you doing with your roster, lads? Come on. By the way, uh, Miz and Morrison throwing shade at John Cena and also throwing shade at Universal Champions who only turn up for work once a, once a year. Brilliant. Brilliant. See, they peel the curtain back. Not fully. Just enough you'd have a bit of fun with it. I liked it. I really liked it. But, yeah, it's just another thing where you think, come on. Come on, man. Like, I love your tag team division and they're so entertaining. But just, no, I want to see a tag team match. Just have all the guys in the ring and going at it because come on that's the triple threat we all deserve and that's the triple threat we all want i swear to actual god they were trying to kill me on this smackdown uh i don't mind the forgotten sons but they weren't even over and they hadn't even done fuck all on nxt and now apparently they've been called up to wrestle on smackdown oh lord coronavirus please piss off and give us back some semblance of sensibility what the they so they beat the luke channels party by the way congratulations luke channels party you had an amazing amazing display at elimination chamber your reward for this getting knocked off by a load of extras from call of duty fantastic stuff what what these guys look like a low rent version of aces and eights and I want you to just sit there for a moment and think about what that entails. Because the Aces and Eights, not so good. <laughs> He's a free guy, right? We can all work very well. And, I mean, Jackson Riker, the fucking size of him. Specimen. But, nah, they, they went for the other two scrubs. Like, Riker looks like he's probably got the most potential just because he's got the best look. And he's just a freak of nature. But... Oh dear, it's just three guys in vests and reasonably cool ring gear and you know, they're alright, they have serviceable matches, they're fine, but like they weren't doing anything on NXT, so why should they be doing anything on SmackDown? Why am I supposed to believe that I know NXT is kind of on a par now and you know, Charlotte's going down there and they've got loads of things going on, but for fuck's sake <laughs> It's, it's like, oh, uh, we've got all these amazing talents on NXT, but we can't. Do you know what they've done? They've realised that AEW has, for the most part, whipped their asses on a Wednesday in ratings. Now, I don't give a shit about ratings because I watch both shows and they're both great. And to be honest, I thought NXT deserved to win the ratings war. And, you know, when you've got a women's ladder match in that proportion and Tommaso Ciampa versus Johnny Gargano, you kind of should be winning the ratings war, with all due respect. So it's not that much of an achievement, ready to beat out Michael Nakas hour <laughs> but uh, come on it's like oh no we can't take anyone good off of it so uh give smackdown the forgotten sons vince has probably seen jackson Riker have gone look at the size of him wow got him on my roster <laughs> it's oh uh, this is a serviceable match nothing more you know reasonable debut but who gives a shit you know they've they've Prove that the Lucha House Party are a bunch of flippy doc, you know, flippy do Mexican jobbers. That's fine. I mean, I think they're actually really good. I think they're wildly underrated. But the biggest problem is they got no characters. They're just really good wrestlers in masks, and you know, they look like two interchangeable guys from CMLL, um, CMLL, excuse me. Uh, you know, I, I don't think that's too harsh to say. You could have grabbed two pretty athletic luchadors from triple a r or cmll and they would have done exactly the same job and you would have been none the wiser and i don't think i would have been none the wiser either that's just just the way it is so no i don't care about the forgotten sons sorry they should have stayed exactly as their name would suggest forgotten oh also tamina as as a contender like sasha and bailey right uh, they're okay they're not too bad. I mean, Jesus Christ. You want to talk about a heel turn that never came that should have come about three years ago. But, oh, God. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's such a typical WWE. Oh, the, um, we're struggling for people to contend. Who should be the your next contender? Oh, yeah, Tamina. Tamina, definitely a good idea. You know, that woman who can't really wrestle and... You know, her dad did some shit and is on dark side of the ring. Yeah, go on in. Lob her out there. She's money. She's Samoan, so apparently she automatically is deserving of title shots. 
fuck off. Who's writing this bollocks? Seriously, Tamina, of all the people. You want to talk about the deflate. Do you know what Tamina reminds me of? It reminds me of the big show. How often would you be getting really excited? Be like, do you know what? CM Punk or whoever it might be, we've got somebody very special for you to face. And then all you'd hear is, well, it's big show. <laughs> That's what Tamina is. As soon as you see those graphics, you're like, oh, one moment, me. I just need to go and have a piss. <laughs> because, no. Nobody wants to see, and I like to meet another person, really cool person from what I can tell, um, seems to have her shit together, obviously gone through a lot, but she's not a good wrestler, and she gets injured a lot, and she even looked like she was limping down to the ring at this point, and she's terrible on the mic, she's not good in the ring, uh, Sasha Banks and Bailey just come across, I mean they're both you know, I love Sasha Banks. I think she's fantastic. I think she's got a great look. She's great on the mic. I think Bailey is so disingenuous as a heel. It comes across as so apparently fake. You just watch it and think, oh, you're clearly not a bad person. You're clearly just Bailey, that fun loving, wacky, wavy, inflatable tube man person. So disingenuous. I. No, I don't like it. I really don't. They're just trying to force it. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah. Bailey's definitely a heel. Watch Bailey. Yeah, she does great things. Uh, no. Absolutely not. Like, just, you know, not good on the mic. Really disingenuous. Uh, I think Bailey has a really big upside as a face. I think as a heel, she, she gets apathy. Nobody gives a shit. So the idea that she might wrestle uh, Tamina for the title. Good God oh my! No, thank you. Um, by the way, Sheamus versus Cal Bloom. What the fuck was that? Cal Bloom looked like... I mean, don't get me wrong. Big guy, put together. But that poor motherfucker looked like he'd just fallen out of college. Just, he reminded me of that guy who got the shit kicked out of him on the first series of Tough Enough. And I'm sure somebody will let me know in the comments below. Which, of course, you can leave any comments you think. Please tell me that I'm not the only person who thought this Smackdown was fucking torrid. It's such a bad watch. As a wrestling fan, I'm just sitting there thinking the amount of things they did wrong and the amount of people, just things that don't work. And where's the star power? You know, there's none of it. There was no John Cena, there was no Fiend, there was no, you know, it's just nobody. It's just like, ugh, man. Do you know what this felt like? The Sunday night heat that you would get before the pay per view. And yeah, no, not great. I mean, Cal Bloom, like. Why couldn't Seamus just fucking bin him off immediately? You know, it took... I mean, it was a fairly short match, but it's still way too long. They, I don't care. And the really sad thing is, I actually think Seamus has a great upside still. I'd love to think, because he spoke about this on um, Edge's podcast, that, you know, the one thing that he'd never done is win the IC Championship. It's the only thing missing for him to have completed everything and to have won every title, to win the Grand Slam, so to speak. And he's a good worker, Seamus. And he's in great physical condition. He's worked hard to get himself back. He had to rehab an injury, that spinal injury. And there was so much talk. I mean, he is in amazing condition. This definitely is the year of older wrestlers looking fucking amazing. I mean, look at what Edge is doing and Randy Orton and all these guys who are, you know, starting to trip into their 40s. And they're all looking fantastic. They really are. But, you know, I don't want to see Seamus jobbing out. Who the fuck is Cal Bloom? Is he an NXT guy? I don't give a shit, mate. I really don't. Sheamus is good on the mic. He looks great. He's so underrated. I've never understood why everyone hates Sheamus so much. I think it, a lot of it has to do with the Danny Bryan stuff and knocking him out in 27 seconds. Yeah, the booking hasn't been always that fantastic for Sheamus. And one of the other things that hurts with Sheamus is the fact that he's not had this fantastic kind of booking when it comes to his title runs like he's a multiple time world and WWE champion but every time he's won it it's been a bit of a fucking joke hasn't it really it's a shame as well because it, well, it's, a, it's a shameful thing um, lobster head yeah I, I just think it's a shame because you know Seamus has put so much into this business he's worked hard and Seamus is one of those guys to when nobody's paying attention he's having some of the best matches on the card but whenever everyone's paying attention he always seems to be booked in crap and I feel bad for him and he's been fed to too many guys and just give him a fucking Intercontinental title run I mean come on you're Sami Zayn as IC champion have Seamus kick his head off you know that'd be fine give him give him the title and then cool we're all done we're all done we're all set 
Speaking of titles, Braun Strowman versus Shinsuke Nakamura and, you know, the commentary team, you know, oh, they were desperate to get over the fact that, oh, Shinsuke wins, he'll get a title shot. <laughs> no, thank you. Uh, Braun dispatches him fairly easily after a little bit of shenanigans and Cesaro trying to get in there. The fact of the matter is, without Sami Zayn, Cesaro and Shinsuke Nakamura are tedious, and that's a real shame because Cesaro is a world-class wrestler, but he's just not got that factor of entertainment has he and people always scream oh fuck say they never push Cesaro oh it breaks my heart to say it because he is one of my favourite wrestlers but he doesn't really need a push he's kind of in the right place he is a bit of a European world class wrestling henchman I don't feel like he's a star and I don't feel like he belongs at the top of the card I know that's a really hard pill to swallow if you've watched a lot of Ring of Honor and Indies like I have for so many years and I love these workers Claudio Casagnoli but I just don't think he's a star. I don't think his promos are particularly that fantastic. There are better guys with suits and shades on. Like, yeah, I don't care. And the Swiss Superman thing has died to death. And This match sucked. Let's be honest. Braun Strowman's not that fantastic a wrestler. And the only thing that anyone cares about, and ultimately, unsurprisingly, the highlight of this entire show was Bray Wyatt challenging him via the Titan Tron. So we didn't really get Bray Wyatt, did we? Let's be honest. We got him on the side of That's fine. Don't get me wrong. And at least there's some sort of backstory here. Because, you know, Braun came in as part of the Wyatt family. And the fact that Bray's like, yeah, I've got rid of John Cena now. Nobody can see him now. And you're next. And, oh, Jesus Christ. Braun Strowman, right? The way he kind of tackled the promo was so fucking trashy when he was just like, I'm ready to let you in. I was like, wow, are we watching Lars Sullivan on one of his um, pornography exploits? Because that was very, very suspect. And then he goes, bye, and tries to mimic brain. You just think, no, absolutely not. Like, you're supposed to be this monster among men, and you're acting like a five-year-old up there. And, yeah, no. It just... Just a big old grown baby, isn't he? Just a big old giant baby. And the sooner they get that fucking belt back on Bray Wyatt, the only person to ever have legitimised the Universal title, in my personal opinion, uh, Seth Rollins was alright and Kevin Owens was okay, but they never really got a chance to you know, defend it properly. Bray Wyatt felt like a real champion. He had that wonderful, wonderful match with Daniel Bryan and you know, a decent run against Seth Rollins, even though they had that horrible Hell in a Cell pick. But... I was just watching this thinking, please hurry up and get to Bray Wyatt versus Braun Strowman. Seriously. Especially if Money in the Bank is cancelled, which is funny because they said they were going to have qualifiers for it. But I've been told that they've cancelled it for now, so no idea what they're doing. Maybe they're going to make that a longer storyline for whatever reason. But fuck's sake, get that belt back on Bray Wyatt because he's literally the best thing about this brand. He is streets ahead of everybody else. Better promo, good in-ring worker. Not necessarily the best technical worker. Obviously, there are guys who can probably wrestle better than him. But there aren't any guys on that brand who can wrestle a story better than he can. And really show you the psychology of wrestling like he can. Because he's got so many layers to him now. And, you know, fucking all the haters can shit on the Firefly Funhouse match. But the one thing it did accomplish is it taught us all that he's very creative and he's a great storyteller. And... That's what we're watching here. We're watching stories. We're not really watching wrestling. We're watching sports entertainment, goddammit. Uh, thank God for Bray Wyatt. He saved this. But I'll tell you what. This was a fucking awful SmackDown. And if you're out there and you thought this was a good SmackDown, I would love to have your mindset because apparently you like absolute fucking mediocrity at best. And you think that's fantastic. So, man, you will settle for anything, won't you? <laughs> because this was fucking garbage. This was a garbage SmackDown. There was some half-decent wrestling that nobody gave a shit about. There was a use of enormous amount of guys and, you know, women as well that people don't give a shit about. And it was punctuated by one decent little promo from Bray Wyatt. And that wasn't even his strongest work anyway. It was just fun to see him. And I think by that point, I was just desperately calling out for something. But do you know what? This was a bad SmackDown. Now, I'm willing to give him credit and say... They haven't all been shit, but this was really bad. And when people are out there screaming about, Oh, fucking AEW sucks, and AEW this, and fucking AEW can't do anything. <laughs> it's like, come on, you can't honestly tell me this is better than Dynamite. Like, I don't get me wrong, I didn't think Dynamite was its strongest. I really enjoyed it, and it was entertaining. I mean, you know, it's all subjective, but how anyone can tell me this was a good SmackDown. 
I'm gobsmacked. I really am. I thought it was fucking tedious. But hey, everyone's entitled to their own opinion. You're entitled to yours. So why don't you leave it in the comments below and let us know what you thought. What did you like about SmackDown and what did you hate about SmackDown? Comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this. Make sure you hit that little bell icon for notifications because we've got so much more coming. A couple of juicy wrestler interviews coming over the next three days as well. So keep an eye out for them as well. If you want to find out who the next big stars of British wrestling are going to be, this is the place to find out because we get so many interviews and we're dropping so many of them in the forthcoming weeks. So keep an eye out for all our content, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed this at WrestlePlug across all social media brands as always. And as always, I have been Aaron Nix and I will catch you very soon for more nonsense from the WrestlePlug. Plug. <laughs>